Hello, thank you for joining today's webinar. This webinar is part of the new I Might Learn series, where we invite officials from national geological agencies and Ministry of Mines to give a high level presentation on the geology of their countries. These presentations serve to complement the data found on the iMine platform. Today, we have Mr. Daudo Deikete from the Guinean Ministry of Mines and Geology. Uh, Mr. Deikete, if you could start your presentation, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Suleimani, and uh, good morning, uh, everybody. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Zachary Suleimani and all the organizers for this webinar for giving the opportunities to uh, the Republic of Chile to present uh, its mining potential. It has been said, uh, this is the headline of uh, the presentation. I will talk uh, uh, quickly uh, about uh, the Republic of Chile, the geological and mineral potential of the country, some reform undertaken since 2010 to improve the investment framework in the country, uh, some results of this reform. Among them, I will show briefly some geoscientific data available in the country, some zone of interest for geological research, and some other investment opportunities and uh, some challenge. So let's start. Uh, the Republic of Guinea is the West African country, uh, which is located, uh, is a West African country with population estimated at uh, 12.3 million inhabitants. In 2017, the GDP growth was 13.4% and the inflation rate 8.9%. Uh, uh, the mining industry comprised 97.884% uh, of uh, exports. Just some figure here to show you that uh, the mining industry is of critical importance to uh, Guinea's uh, uh, economy. So, um, country mineral uh, resources. Guinea holds the world's largest deposit of bauxite, uh, concentrated mainly in the western part of the country. Uh, resources are estimated to be 40 billion ton, with a grade higher than 40% and a low silica content. Guinea with the grade of for gold. Reserves are estimated to be more than seven tons, concentrated mainly in the Birimen uh, formation zone. Speaking about uh, Birimen formation, just allow me to tell you that uh, uh, Guinea uh, has more than 40,000 square kilometers of Birimen formation. It is a formation likely to contain both deposits. And uh, so far, we only have two. Uh, industrial going company operating in uh, those uh, 40 countries. So that means we have a uh, uh, proven ability to discover other interesting uh, uh, mining, uh, gold mining in those areas. Guinea is uh, uh, also uh, rich in terms of diamond resources. Uh, the diamond resources are estimated to be 30 billion carat with a proven ability to discover other interesting primary uh, deposits. In fact, in Guinea, most of the uh, operator, the diamond operator, are in a small scale and uh, uh, in the alluvial environmental area. So that means we have uh, really in uh, the country a proven ability to discover other uh, primary. Area for this metal, like nine and precious stone. Uh, 
uptake in, uh, in Guinea since 2010 to improve the intake in 2011 and revise in 2013 to optimize benefit from the enforcing attractiveness for investors. A shared user agreement master plan for infrastructure is being implemented to reduce costs and the duration of the mining projects. A one-stop shop and a new licensing procedure were put in place in 2017 to facilitate the administrative procedure to obtain the license and authorization for integrated mining projects. The boost of subcontracting and partnering in Guinea was launched in 2018 is a kind of reference platform was launched in September 2016, providing a real-time information on mining license online, thus increasing transparency. The delay to obtain mining permit has been cut substantially about two weeks as of the date for registration. A local content policy set up setting set a clear framework, and uh, the country is uh, in uh, compliance with uh, EITI since 2014. So now let's talk about some results of uh, this reform. The country has attracted an investment of uh, more than 10 billion between 2016 and 2025, of which three billion dollars are being invested. The country annual bauxite production has increased from 18 million ton in 2010 to 60 million ton in 2018. Uh, there are currently nine aluminum refinery projects in Guinea. The country has moved from seventh place to third place in the world bauxite production country. The free aluminum refinery operated by Rushal was recently relaunched, putting 2,000 Guineans back to work. Mining convention signed with Chalco, TBA, SBG, Winning, Penan, Kimbo, SMD for integrated mining infrastructure mega projects. This prior market bridge launched in December 2018 with the support of the World Bank. New railway and port infrastructure was born. Many geological projects have been launched. So uh, as a result of uh, the geological project, uh, I will show just quickly some uh, geological and mineral map, which underline some mineral, some mineral potential area and some uh, uh, mafic and ultramafic work the work uh, likely to contain a base model deposit. So we also have uh, uh, in our disposal some geophysical map. Geophysical map uh, based on uh, magnetic signal. Uh, from the magnetic signal, we have uh, magnetic intensity anomaly. We have uh, RTP. We have uh, a analytic signal. And we also have a radiometric uh, signal, as you can see here based on uranium, thorium, and potassium, and some structural map uh, underline some uh, deep fault, surface fault, and regional fault, and local fault. The fault that can be a mineralization trap. We also have a geochemistry map. Recently, uh, with uh, uh, the French uh, company, we have uh, uh, done some, some uh, swim sediment survey in the southwest of the country. The result of this study highlight interesting uh, zone for base cobalt, tin, chromite, oxide, uh, etc. And uh, uh, on the basis of all the survey we have, like uh, as you can see on this map. So I just show you some other investment opportunities that we can find in Guinea. Guinea is often referred to as a water tower of Africa. In fact, the country has a new hydro potential estimated at the six thousand megawatts. Other energy sources are available such as renewable energy uh, like wind, solar, and biomass. We are developing a new master plan 
project for current open up immunalizer zone. So the mining company, uh, which are already in operation in Guinea, we have CBG, Rushal, GAD, SMB, SMD, Enanshin, Angu, Gold, Ashanti, etc. And many other companies are coming uh, into the country to develop the project. So the World Bank and uh, many other banks pass uh, the Guinea mining sector. So we also have some challenge. We are working on it now. Uh, to cope uh, with uh, those challenges. The government is working to take up more attracting new investors for better assessment, local processing of mineral product, 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 local processing of mining products, capacity building to support, manage, and control projects, infrastructure development to open up and mineralize the zone, economic and social environment impact of the project, geological knowledge improvement. So that's our website. You can easily find the mining cadastra uh, to see all the company is uh, working now in uh, the country. I just uh, want to add before to, to end the presentation um, about uh, the uh, tender that has been recently launched about the block one and two of uh, Simandu, which uh, SMD winning, or the consortium SMD winning, uh, win uh, the, 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 the tender. They invest uh, recently, um, the, the plan to invest $40 billion to develop uh, that project. And uh, the project comprises uh, infrastructure that can, uh, that can go uh, from, from the country that can allow to open up all the mineralized uh, zone uh, from uh, the country. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Aikete, for that uh, insightful presentation. If you don't mind me asking, I have a few questions during your presentation that I was noting down. Uh, to, okay. st uh, to start with, the geological maps that you showed and geological, geophysical maps and geochemistry maps, when was that uh, created? When was the survey done? Okay. Um, the, the first, the, uh, the Russian company, uh, we call that uh, the company that has been made by uh, uh, Mamikov. And we have other geological map from PGR. It is a German uh, company. It was uh, about uh, um, done uh, from 1998. That's about the geological map. The geophysical map, uh, you know about the geo survey. Geo survey uh, has been has has been has, has done some study in the country uh, in in 1980, but it was the raw data. The raw data printed by by uh, uh, other uh, company with geophysical map. That was uh, 2018. 2018, those data have been interpreted with a new technology. New technology. Besides the geophysical data, we also have a spatial data, like a topographic map. Map with a France company, BRCM. Okay, thank you. And uh, the one-stop shop that you mentioned, so does that mean I from uh, London right here can just go on the website and apply for a license or do I have to set up operations in Guinea? You are interested to apply for uh, some interesting uh, uh, area uh, across the country. Uh, the first thing is to meet uh, uh, the CPTM, Center of Promotion and Mining Development. And uh, with uh, the CPTM procedure, uh, you can uh, try to choose, uh, as I said, the delay to obtain uh, the mining uh, permit has been cut 
substantially, about two weeks now for, as, as of the date of registration. So when you register from the CPDM, uh, they will give you about two weeks to allow you to access to uh, area for, for interest. And then like, uh, recognition, site recognition, some interest to develop a project in Guinea, you know, for the, to, for the development of the mining project, you need a lot of uh, infrastructure issue, uh, some material to facilitate the project. You can just try to Hello. Sorry, I think I missed you. Are you still here? Uh, one stop shop from uh, uh, London. That's not, not an issue. You can find easily the area from our website. When you find, when you identify the zone of interest, the area where you want to develop and impact and then you can contact the CPDM. They will give you all the this uh, this uh, this area to move forward. Oh, thank you, thank you about that. And uh, sorry to go back to the geological data. Is it free to access, or do you have to pay an amount? Yeah. The geophysical map, because recently Guinea has put more than seven million dollars to get some geophysical map. It is not a geophysical data we are uh, putting, we are selling. It is not the cost for the geophysical map, but to allow some investor to have this geophysical map. I'm talking about the geophysical map and geochemistry map. The geophysical map is free. Geophysical and geochemistry, to allow investors to get that, we have put in place some procedure. Some procedure, um, the price uh, uh, about uh, one uh, kilometer line is uh, just significant. It's, it's just uh, um, uh, for, uh, for the maintenance, uh, for, for the, the services, who is holding those data. So it can be, for example, uh, $10 for one kilometer line. So that, can, that, is not, uh, that is not a big money for the investor. We are not developing a policy to, to sell the, those data, but to attract investment through those data. But in attractiveness, in um, our attractiveness policy, we need just some little, uh, some little resources, uh, financial resources to maintain uh, uh, the services who is developing and who is uh, who's, uh, who's, uh, who's, uh, who's, uh, who's Okay, thank you. And a couple of more questions, if you don't mind, if you still have time. Uh, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, I noticed from the mining companies operating in Guinea, uh, for example, GAC, SMB, and CBG, they're all partly owned by the Guinean ministry or the Guinean government. Can a foreign company have 100% control of a mining lease? Okay, that is the uh, country policy. You know, if uh, um, from the beginning you subscribe for an uh, exploration license and uh, you move uh, for war until the, um, the, 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 the mining uh, exploitation, for example, the mining operation, uh, the state, the state to have some share about uh, uh, the global share for, from the uh, from the, the, the mining operation. Like uh, in 100%, the uh, uh, government of Guinea, uh, the state, the Guinean state can have 15%, uh, for example. And that does depend. 
that depends on what you have been, what you plan to develop. If the project, for example, is a, uh, is a huge investment and you can try to, uh, to build infrastructure which is not uh, uh, in place in Guinea, the government can revise its participation in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in this uh, sharing. So yes, from the beginning, the government will take some share in on the into the uh, volume, the uh, volume of investment uh, that you will uh, make in Guinea, the government can revise uh, his uh, share uh, to downgrade them uh, to allow the investor to move forward in terms of uh, uh, mining production, mining operation. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, uh, thanks for that. And then finally, I'm not. Uh, sure if you mentioned this in your presentation, but would you be able, because right now during COVID-19, obviously gold is very popular. So would you be able to tell me if and when? I lost you. Oh, you lost me, hello. Sorry, can, can, you, can you repeat the, 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 yeah, I lost you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, you know, I was saying. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I was saying, you know, during this current pandemic, gold is very popular. And Guinea is something that people know more about bauxite and iron ore. Would you be able to say a few words on the Sigiri uh, area in the western, no, eastern Guinea, the gold potential of that area? As I mentioned on, uh, during my presentation, as you said, Guinea is well known to uh, be the country which holds uh, uh, the deposits of bauxite, uh, iron ore, uh, etc. So uh, we also have a very, very potential area for gold. As I told, thousand square kilometers in the uh, pyramid formation. The pyramid formation is the same formation of Mali, in Senegal, and in the Ivory Coast, in the Ghana, etc. The Bima formation is 40,000 square kilometers. And so far, we only have a mining operation. The goal uh, is to attract investment, is to attract the investor to uh, make more research of gold is complicated than the bauxite. The bauxite you can find uh, uh, on top of the surface, but the gold sometimes can be on the uh, uh, on the fold and on, on the on the on the zone of sediment. Uh, so to investment before to find. So the policy of Guinea is really to attract the investment on the gold area. The two big company who is working on the billion area, their square kilometers will be, will not be uh, more than, uh, let's say 10,000. So imagine that in 40,000 square kilometers, even if it is just 1,000 shared by the both uh, uh, mining company, and this your mining company in gold now, what about the 39,000 square kilometers? So we really have a, a very uh, primary deposit in gold. And we have some other primary uh, data like geophysical data. If some investors are interested to come in Guinea to, to develop the, the gold project, those data will be uh, put and will be available to them uh, uh, in accordance with uh, our procedure to encourage, the, to encourage the, the investor to move forward to discover gold now is to announce the gold product. Hello, are you still here? I think I lost you. It's okay. I lost you. I didn't. Are you back? Hi. Oh, the connection issue. I can't hear.
Yeah, so what you said right now was very interesting. Now, because uh, bauxite is shallow, but gold is deeper, you require a lot more investment to get the gold out. So does that mean, is the Guinean ministry given extra incentive to gold investors coming into Guinea? I thought the last war. Okay, I said, uh, when you're giving me an answer on the gold occurrences in Guinea, you mentioned something that was very interesting. Uh, you said uh, bauxite is very yeah. shallow, but gold is mm -hmm. quite deep. It requires a lot of a lot more investment. It's shallow. Yeah. Yeah. So does that mean is the Guinean exactly. ministry or the Guinean government providing extra incentive to gold investors coming into Guinea? i.e. you said the geophysical data is free, to, is free access to that. Are there any extra incentives to promote gold investment in Guinea? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I think you circumscribed the, the, the issue. The bauxite is very shallow, as you mentioned, and the gold is very thick. So to take out the gold, you need to... Um, to, to invest more, to invest, to invest more in terms of research. So uh, the government uh, policy is to encourage the investors in the whole area. So have this whole extraction because we know the country is well known for bauxite area. All the bauxite area has been delineated Uh, mostly in, in Guinea, but in the, the company are already seeking. If you look uh, look out on the uh, website, mining cadastre, you can see the Guinean zone, a lot of mining company uh, doing the research. So we are still encouraging people to come in Guinea to, um, to develop the uh, uh, whole project. At the end of the day, uh, we would like, if someone proposes us uh, to, to go from the rec recognition side to the um, research permit, the government uh, through the CPDM can facilitate that policy to strengthen the gold production for the country. So yes, if the investor came in Guinea to extract the gold, to take out gold, it will be, uh, it will be encouraged and, uh, and accompanied to be to facilitate uh, the work, uh, uh, the mining work in the, in the gold area. So just one point to add, the geological map is free. The geological map I saw is free. The geophysical map is mostly free because that's for all investors. But just, just to, to allow the, the services which can manage uh, the updating uh, uh, the, the data. I understand completely. You need to pay for hosting, for maintenance, for the staff, ATC. No, I completely understand that. All right, thank you. I think we've answered almost uh, all the questions that I received so far. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And uh, if you have any, do you have any closing statements or we can end now? Okay, uh, just um, uh, to tell to uh, the investor that uh, uh, Guinea is uh, uh, the country which is not unknown, which is not known, I, I, I would like to, to mention. The, apart from bauxite today, iron ore in the south, uh, in the south part of Nimba, we have huge mineral potential across the country, uh, like cobalt, nickel, chrome, uh, copper, etc. tea. So the country is ready to, uh, to welcome all the investors who uh, want to develop the peace uh, middle project, the good project in the country. So we'll do everything to accompany them uh, to move forward the project. And I believe you have uh, some offshore hydrocarbons, oil and gas, correct? Yeah, yeah, 
we have some uh, uh, offshore data, we have some magnetic offshore data, and uh, we call that influence bassin person. Um, those bassin person, you can find some potential for hydrocarbon for, for that. We have some primary data for that. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Daikiti, and thank you for giving up your time to promote Guinea uh, very well. Thank I you, think uh, thank you. all of our investors will be very interested in what you had to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.